Welcome to Premium Times Podcast. You're listening to Premium Times Half Hour on Radio, where the team discusses a Premium Times investigation into how Nigeria efforts bomb children already terrorized by Boko Haram in Niger State. The former Boko Haram fighter became a Nigerian prison official. And um, last week, how an Emir awarded a wanted terrorist in Zamfara State a traditional title. And I am here with um, my lovely co-presenter, Chiamaka. Um, Chiamaka, how do you feel knowing that we have to repeatedly discuss insecurity? It's really scary for me. I feel very unsafe now because I'm not even sure of the next week what's going to happen. Okay, you're welcome. <laughs> okay, I was secretly snorking. <laughs> okay, how are you feeling today? Uh, I'm not feeling very well, but because of the weather. Well, it's good to have you here. Thank you. Well, how, how do you feel about we discussing insecurity over and again? Well, this is, you know, it's, it's, it's scary. It's, it's troubling. It's worrisome. It's, it's something we should really, you know, pay attention to. Yeah. And we need to find a solution to it. We really do need to find a solution because we can't keep living like this, you know, in fear, waking up early in the morning, if I'm not even sure of the next minute. Like exactly. Said, you yeah. Know. True. You don't even know who is. You don't, you don't even trust your neighbor these days. Exactly. Yeah, just yourself. Yeah. All right. On this show, Premium Times, have all we discuss issues that concern you as a Nigerian. This show is brought to you by Premium Times, Nigeria's leading investigative and accountability platform. Premium Times Alpha is Premium Times' flagship radio program that spotlights exclusive reports produced by Premium Times from in-depth investigation, unique analysis, special reports, entertainment gist, and human angle stories among others remember this is an audience centered program meaning you can call us right away if you want to share your rep- your opinion on those reports the phone numbers to call us 090 32 22 97 97 I'll take that again, 90 32 22 97 97 80 82 22 20 37. Again, 080 82 22 20 37 and 081 82 22 22 25. Um, Chamaka. Um, we, I understand we published some very interesting um, uh, reports. Um, but before we dissect this particular um, um, report for today, um, Chamaka would keep up, keep you up to speed with um, some of the um, events that occurred in Premier Times and some of the amazing articles that were published during the week. Chamaka, over to you. Thank you, Titi. It appears to be a very cold morning. Or oh, somewhat a cold morning in Abuja. Yeah. <laughs> like I feel like <laughs> really yeah. Yeah. Uh, so, within the week, we published some very fascinating reports. And first is a special report that looks into slaughterhouses in Aquaribom State where animal waste fuel greenhouse gas emission. Most of the time, we see agricultural emissions that come from the clearing of forests for farms, methane from livestock and rice production, and nitrous oxide, ox, oxide, yeah, nitrous oxide, pardon me, from the use of fertilizers as the only sources of um, greenhouse gases. But this report also spotlights abattoirs where you go to buy your meat or where they kill meat, where you kill your cow, ram, mm, and goat. Yeah, yeah. Um, as also another source of greenhouse gas as a result of animal waste which contributes to global warming and climate crisis we also publish an analysis that examines how africa can achieve prosperity but which stated clearly that there will be no quick fixes Yes, there's a way out of this, but it's not going to be a quick one. It equally highlighted a website that provides data-driven pathways that can increase income levels and reduce poverty. At this point, okay, isn't this a useful guide for the Nigerian government, considering that we have about 70 million persons in Nigeria that are below the poverty line? (laughs) Well, of course, it is, is, uh, but... But the big question is, the important question we keep asking is, will the Nigerian government make good use of the data-driven pathways, you know? 
experts, you know, keep on bringing solutions, they prefer solutions, but the government does not really pay attention to it. Like, <laughs> it's true, sad. that's true. Yeah, I mean, we have a lot of laws, and um, yeah. yeah, and implementation is really low. Really low. That's, you know, having laws is not even the problem. And you know one funny thing about the Nigerian government? Every day, we, they, they keep on bringing policies. <laughs> Every and when you investigate, you realize that it gets abandoned. It's not yeah, even it's not working. It's the implementation is the problem, you know? Yeah, but I mean, what can we do other than continue what we are doing to keep asking questions and try to yeah. hold the government accountable? Exactly. The advocacy and all that. Yeah. You know. We published several interesting and enlightening reports during the week, but I'm going to end with this, a data-focused analysis which projected that the Austrian governorship election offers some hope ahead of the almighty 2023 general elections. The report indicated that the voter turnout for the Austrian elections was better compared to other recent elections held in Anambra, Edo, Ondo, and Ekiti states, and a relatively peaceful electoral process. And a lot of people on social media will say thanks to the new electoral act that gave, you know, credence yeah. to the elections. Mm, true. And to quickly add that Premium Times also holds a weekly Twitter spaces on Twitter, of course, where citizens are allowed to make um, contributions, ask questions. We serve as a bridge between you and policymakers and, of course, the government. It holds every Wednesday from 6 to 7.30 p.m. on Twitter. TD. Uh, thank you, Amacha and Jemaka. Um, now we'll take a short break and when we return, we'll be joined by Ibrahim Adeyemi, Premium Times Chief Correspondent on the Investigation Desk, who wrote the report on how the Nigeria Air Force covered up the bombing of children in Niger State. Stay with us. Investigations, special reports, analysis, and breaking news. Premium Times, a leading multimedia news platform, brings to you every minute stories that helps you make informed decisions and hold public officials, individuals, and organizations accountable. We have cartoons, videos, podcasts, and other interesting content for your delight. For timely updates on politics, entertainment, sport and business, visit our website on www.premiumtimesng.com and follow us on all our social media platforms. Don't miss out. Welcome back. If you are just joining us, this is Premium Times, half hour brought to you by Premium Times. Um, on Citizen FM 93.7. Remember, this is an audience-centered program, meaning you can start calling us right away if you want to share your opinion on this report. The phone numbers to call are 090 080-82-22-97-97, 080-82-22-2037, 080-82-22-2037, 080-82-22-2037, 22037 and 081-82-22-2205. And before we're joined by Ibrahim Adeyemi, Premium Times' Chief Correspondent on the Investigation Desk, I would like to give some insight into this report. So in April this year, one morning at Korebe Community in Shiroro area of Niger State, um, six girls were playing around a borehole when, when a military fighter jet appeared overhead hunting for military targets in the area because of a piece of information they got that all residents in Kurebe are terrorists. The jets dropped explosive artillery shells, which caused trees to fall on roofs. In the process, six children were killed. Their parents and residents in this community were only able to collect the torn remains of their bodies, which they could hardly recognize. A youth leader in Shiroro later alerted the world of the tra tragedy, but the secretary of the Niger state government described the news as fake. <laughs> Again, the youth leader invited the families of the victims to speak to journalists, but the government ordered the um, traditional ruler from Kurebe to block the parents from coming to Mina, the state capital, to grant the interview. In fact, they prevented local journalists in the state from investigating the matter and gathering any evidence on the matter before our, correspond our chief correspondent on the investigation desk ibrahim adeyemi there is hardly any hard notes he cannot crack so ibrahim you you did a great job um providing details um about 
how the families felt and and i want to hear from you here right now how, um what the families what did the families tell you about the tragedy what were their, ex their facial expressions when you told them about the report you were coming to do um how did you get them to cooperate with you despite intimidations by um the authorities brian okay so thank you for um it was uh, a really tough reporting trip for me and um, I almost could not do the story because the parents were discouraged from talking to journalists and they have been threatened and um, they didn't want the government's problem. But you mm -hmm. know, after um, some time, after waiting for some weeks and making some calls mm -hmm. and you know, I, I finally got to convince them to talk to me mm -hmm. and um, it was really uh, a difficult job to do, but I, I tried my best to ensure that it was it was done. You, you actually did a very great job. Um, so when you when you confronted the, confronted the authorities um, with your findings, what exactly did they say? Well, they denied it. Um, they said the incident never happened, and then they said um, all the all, all, everybody living in Kwebe that the community where the incident happened mm. is terrorist. You know, they claim that um, the story that children were killed in Kurebe um, it was a fake story, mm. you know. So, uh, when I uh, fi finally found out that the story was true, mm. and I called them, they still continue to deny it, and they evaded my question, and they decided not to just answer me yet. I understand that. Actually, <laughs> I understand having the co the conversation with the authority, with the official, and you are like, I saw these things. I was there, and you are blatantly telling me that this did not happen. How did you feel about that? I, I felt really um, embarrassed, and uh, I felt really embarrassed because I I, I was in Nigeria for nearly two weeks. Mm. You know, I you know discussing the difficult terrain and the, the right community. And then I came back to tell the authorities that I had seen the, the appearance of the victim, and I had spoken to a lot of sources, and they were saying that I don't know what I'm, I'm, I'm saying. Mm. You know, it can be, you know, it is frustrating when you put the yes, it is. something, yes, and it the is. authorities are trying to Cover uh, make, make it look like you don't know what you are doing, mm. Mm. you know. All right, remember this, yeah. okay, okay. You, okay. You remember this is um, an audience-centered um, program, meaning you can start calling us right away if you want to share your opinion on this report. Um, the numbers to call are 90 32 22 97 97 90 32 22 97 97 080 82 22 22 20 37 080 82 22 20 37 Okay, <laughs> this is your face, eh? <laughs> So, yeah, first you have a, report, um, um, a question for Ibrahim. Please ask. Yeah, of course I do. I do. This is really worrying. <laughs> yeah, so Ibrahim, so I'm still trying yeah. to process why this accidental bombings, you know, the word accidental is <laughs> in quotes. Because it's really accidental. I can, I can hardly hear you. Okay. Can you hear me now? Yeah. Okay, so I said I'm, wond I'm still trying to process why these accidental bombings are re recurring. You know, although you mentioned that it's as a result of um, operational failures. Now, do you have uh, a piece of insider knowledge as to why they fail to verify information given to them? Because it appears to me as though they use these bombings to score points and say they have destroyed a certain number of terrorist bases. The, 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 the problem, as I would have told, is complacency. Okay. You know? The Nigerian Air Force official, we just listen to intelligence. We, we got intelligence from state officials and without having to verify, you know. Uh, when they tell you that the group of people are terrorists, they don't even verify, they just go and bomb them. Mm -hmm. You know, that's why we have many civilian casualties. The, the ideal thing is for them to verify, to investigate properly, to ensure that civilians are not being killed in place of terrorists. But most times when they get gather when they get intelligence of the state officials, mm -hmm. they just go in there, do whatever they can do. At the end of the day, no terrorists get killed. Civilians will be the ones to suffer 
from the bombing. It uh. has happened elsewhere. It happened in Borno. It happened in uh, elsewhere in Nanja State. It happened yeah. in Safara yeah. several times. It happened even in Katila. It happened in Kaduna several weeks ago. Mm. So it's, it's, a, it's a trend that the Nigerian government needs to look into mm. if you are serious about ending terrorism. We shouldn't be the one killing civilians that we are supposed to defend or protect, you know. That, and that's the problem we have with Nigerian security um, uh, authorities. Yeah, so okay. Ibrahim, not to cut you short very quickly, your report alleged an attempted cover-up. Could you provide some perspective briefly for our listeners to understand what this attempted cover-up was like in Kuribe? Well, well the, 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 the cover-up was actually massive. And, I mean, the, I, I realized that the state government you know, was so desperate to cover the case up. But, you know, I waited for them to do, to do the cover-up enough. <laughs> and when they thought that everything had finished and people had moved on, mm. I started my investigation. Mm. I mean, that was a smart so, one to do. Yeah, it's a very smart one, yeah. You get it. So you, if I had pushed too much when you're doing the cover-up, I would be able to see that story. It's true. But I, I waited for them to finish their cover-up, and then I went ahead to meet the sources. And even though it was a difficult thing to do, mm. because they, they were scared, mm. I, I, I eventually was able to convince them to talk to me. So the cover-up was that, they denied access to the parents of the victims. Mm. They want the local monarch not to ever allow them to grant interviews to any journalists. You know, some youth activists in Nanga State, led by um, Sally Sutapu, yes, yes, you know, yes. had invited journalists in Mina and asked the parents to come to address journalists in the state capital. Mm. But the state officials called the local monarch to send them back to the village. And not allow them to grant such interview. Oh, interesting. Because it the image of the government. So, but that's the cover up, you know. It, 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 uh, it's something to do cover up and that's it to wait for, to, to be patient enough to uncover the, the cover up. Okay, Ibrahim, so um, what do you want the government to do about this matter? And um, do you intend to um, follow up? And also, I mean, the re report was published yesterday. Do you have a new piece of information on this on this report? So, um, a, a, this is uh, what we call um, truth beyond official mm -hmm. You know, reporting beyond what the, the state officials have said. Okay. If we have to go by the everyday news reporting, we would just say, okay, so the officials have said that it never happened, mm. and then we will move on. So, but my job as an investigative journalist is not to listen to official segment of exactly yes, um, you know, and mm -hmm. dig further. Mm -hmm. So, um, it is a it is, it, it is something they have denied. You know, sometimes they know they do not want to say anything else because they know that once they say something else again, I mean, they have to speak. Exactly, very true. So, they don't want to maintain silence in this kind of situation. You get Okay. I mean, All right. Mama. All right. I'm still going to follow up to ensure that everything is put in place. All right. Why you? And that the government acts on the recommendations made in the story. All right, so while you do that, please stay safe and thank you so much for sharing um, and giving more details about your report. Thank you so much. Thank you. All right, um, this is um, a really sad conversation and we pray that the affected families get justice. I'm sure our listeners may want to weigh in on this. You can call this number 090 080-322-97-97, 090-322-97-97, 080-822-22-0037, 080-822-22-0037, 080-822-22-0037. Um, another number to call is 081-822-22-205, We'll go on a short break and when we are back, we would um, get more just from us. Stay with us. Don't miss out. Investigations, special reports, analysis, and breaking news. Premium Times, a leading multimedia news platform, brings to you every minute stories that helps you make informed decisions and hold public officials, individuals, and organizations accountable. We have cartoons, videos, podcasts, and other interesting content for your delight. 
For timely update on politics, entertainment, sport and business, visit our website on www.premiumtimesng.com and follow us on all our social media platforms. Don't miss out. Welcome back. If you're just joining us, this is Premium Times Half Hour brought to you by Premium Times on Citizen FM 93.7. We have been discussing a Premium Times investigation that exposed the Nigerian Air Force um, bombing of children in the Boko Haram ravaged community in Niger State and how the government and the Air Force tried to cover it up. And you can you can weigh in on this um, particular conversation by calling us on 090. 32 again 081 so anaka um I mean, when I read this report, it was beautifully written, uh, but I mean, it was sad to read. But I want to know, what, how exactly did you feel after reading this report? So first for me, it was the temerity to want to deny people's lived experiences, yeah? Mm. And so you tell people, this thing that happened to you did not happen. It's just a pigment of your imagination. And that's what um, the Navy, sorry, the Air Force rather, and the Nigerian government and the Niger State government tried to do mm-hmm. by, you know, burying these things. And yes. then you, you quickly rush to bury these children without closure for their families. And then reading the report further, I couldn't contain the emotions that ran through me. You know, these are children. And at these very early stages of their life, so the ones who died are gone. Yes, and you can't have them back. Yes, but there are the other ones, their siblings, their families who yes. have lived with the post-traumatic syndrome. Mm. You know, that, so you read in the report that when they come to the tab area where their siblings were killed, mm. and they see or they hear uh, um, an aircraft hovering around, they mm. have to run back because they, f- they fear for their lives. Oh, could this also be my end? And you imagine that these are children, this could be like teenagers or kids who are not mm. even teenagers yet. Yes. And they have to deal with this kind of emotions. And yes. they can hardly express themselves, you get. Yeah. So when you think about all of this and you ask yourself, where are we heading to? You also put it in the context of the several, you know, insecurity stories and issues we have to deal with as a nation, as a people. And then you ask, where are we heading to? I mean, is it really hard for the government to actually apologize and say, we did wrong, we know we're wrong, and we apologize and then compensate these families? Uh, you know, so in I saw a, a movie that said nobody cries for the queen or nobody cries for the king. But in Nigeria's case, it's perhaps um, the people can cry all they want, but we are not going to do anything. So it's more like we don't owe you an apology. Mm. So it, it for me, it feels like... And so because we're heading into another election year, it almost feels like you voted us in. So whatever we're giving you, you have to take that. You can't question us and we can yes, we're accountable like, to you. But well, just in a, in, in quote, a resting period to when the next government and it should not be so we should be able to hold these leaders accountable to the very last day to their last day in office yes yes because if we don't do then this is what we keep getting but it's shameful really that's that's the word yes it's shameful shameful. yes um okay let's bring this home we're talking about insecurity and we've been speaking about it for the past two weeks and um considering the situation that we have in um, abuja at the moment where i mean it's it's alleged that um, some terrorists have sent um, letters to um, tertiary institutions in Abuja, and which forced some tertiary institutions to actually close schools, call the parents of children in, uh, of their children, and telling them that they should come pick them up from school. Um, how how do you feel basically at the moment now that um, did this whole development basically the Kuja prison attack, the recent development? How do you feel? How safe do you feel in Abuja? <laughs> the last question how safe do I feel <laughs> the truth is that I feel very unsafe you know? yes I feel very very unsafe and it's 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 just really scary and you know so first of all I, 
another thing is I feel maybe say the government they failed the citizens. Imagine a capital territory <laughs> where Abuja used to be one of the safest places. Yes, in Nigeria, exactly. You know? You're in Abuja. Oh, okay. Oh, that's good. You're safe. But now you're in Abuja. You have to be careful, though. <laughs> As in, when <laughs> it's fall like this, I'm worried. Like, people are like, why? Where are you going to? It's just four o'clock. I'm going, going to my home. house. Yes. <laughs> You know, like I last said, I'm worried, worried about my life, my colleagues, you know, people go to work. Yeah. And you don't know what is happening. You don't know what's happening. You could be in your office and you could hear one sound like that and everybody's yeah, running. And it's gone. For me, and it's gone. So I feel the Nigerian government should stand up to its responsibilities, you know, mm-hmm. should protect the lives of the citizens. If if they can't do any other thing, they should just protect our lives. That's 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 the least why we're, we're expecting we're them. Expecting. Exactly. But that's you know, perhaps the only job they have to do for citizens. Right? Well, that's exactly. not the only job, but for now, for they now, just protect us. Exactly. And I, 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 we cannot continue like this. That's the truth. All right. They so must we, ensure people are safe. Yes. They must ensure people are safe. Yes. Yes. I agree with you. Um, going on a shop break and when we return we'll get um share with you more updates from premium times stay with us podcasts and other interesting content for your delight for timely update on politics entertainment sport and business visit our website on www.premiumtimesng.com and follow us on all our social media platforms don't miss out Investigations, special reports, analysis, and breaking news. Premium Times, a leading multimedia news platform, brings to you every minute stories that helps you make informed decisions and hold public officials, individuals, and organizations accountable. We have cartoons, videos, podcasts, and other interesting content for your delight. For timely update on politics, entertainment, sport, and business, Visit our website on www.premiumtimesng.com and follow us on all our social media platforms. Don't miss out. Welcome back. If you're just joining us, this is Premium Times Half Hour brought to you by Premium Times on Citizen FM 93.7. We have been discussing a Premium Times investigation that exposed the Nigerian Air Force for bombing children in a community in Niger State and how the government tried to cover it up. If you still want to share your ideas, you can do that by um, calling us on this phone number 090 32 22 97 87 080 82 22 2037 and 081 82 22 22 05. In the meantime, Amaka, let's keep our listeners up to date with some interesting reports they missed during the week. First, we published a special report that looked into slaughterhouses in Aquaribom Bomb States where animals waste fuel greenhouse gases emission that contribute to global warming and climate crisis. We also published an analysis that examined how Africa can achieve prosperity and spotlighted a website that provides data-driven pathways to improve income levels and reduce poverty. Also, we published a data-powered analysis which treated the Ocean State governorship elections as one that offers hope ahead of 2023 govern- um, sorry, general elections to come. Just to also add that Premium Times holds a weekly Twitter conversation, Twitter Spaces, on Twitter every Wednesday from 6 p.m. to 7.30 p.m. where citizens are allowed to share their opinions and make their contribution on issues of national importance every Wednesday 6 to 7.30 p.m. on Twitter. Thank you very much. Thank you, ladies, for being part of this very sad story and sad conversation today. Um, this is where we round off today's episode. Um, I hope you had an amazing time with us. Make sure you keep your dialogues on to Premium Times Half Hour every Thursday at 11.05 on Citizen FM 93.7. Um, remember, this is Premium Times, a leading multimedia news platform which serves you every many stories that can help you make informed decisions and hold public officials, individuals, and organizations accountable. For timely um, updates on politics, entertainment, sports, and business, visit our website, www.premiumtimesng.com to follow us on all our social medias, media platforms, sorry, and we have cartoons, videos, podcasts, and other interesting content for your delight. God willing, we'll be here again, same time, same day, from Amaka, Oge, and myself, Titi Lope. Enjoy the rest of your day. 
investigations, special reports, analysis, and breaking news. Premium Times, a leading multimedia news platform, brings to you every minute stories that helps you make informed decisions and hold public officials, individuals, and organizations accountable. We have cartoons, videos, podcasts, and other interesting content for your delight. For timely updates on politics, entertainment, sport, and business, visit our website on www.premiumtimesng.com and follow us on all our social media platforms. Don't miss out. Abuja. Wake up. Reach out. Speak up. Speak out. You, you are the are voice the of a new generation. generation. And this is your station. Talk Radio 93.7 Citizen FM. B square. Okay. Yeah. Speak up. Speak out. 
You are the voice of a new generation. And this is your station. Talk Radio 93.7 Citizen FM. 